Calling number, um, I think, 216-249-6658. You can't remember that number. You yeah, I'm, remember I'm pretty, I'm, I'm remembering the numbers, 216-249-6658. So that's what it is. Okay. So I got to give a shout-out, first of all, a couple of happy birthdays. Um, Sandy Dilda, happy birthday. Also, we got to set again a shout out to happy birthday to my cousin Virgil Brown in Columbus, Ohio. Today's his birthday. Um, actually, it was Saturday. Saturday? Yeah. My son's birthday was Monday. Uh, yo, yeah, yo. Yeah. Yeah, it's happy no, no, birthday. No, 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 my middle, my baby boy. Baby boy. Baby boy. Okay. He turned twenty-seven. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Happy birthday to him. He getting older. Mm-hmm. I told him he getting older. Mama just getting older. <laughs> you go. You go. You go. You go. You gonna do that to him right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So. All right. Well, we also got the top like just breaking news. Gloris Leachman, longtime act. What's her name? At Gloris Leachman. What's her name? Huh? What's her name? Doors. Gloris. 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 Gloris Leachman. Gloris Leachman died. I just said, no, you know, all right, you but you know, Cloris and Cloris Leachman. Cloris Leachman. Yes. Yeah. Like, Leachman, the lady that played like a whole bunch of stuff, she uh, died at yeah. age 94. Yeah, she's yeah. Like All right. And also, Hammer and Hank Aaron. Legendary baseball player passed away. Pad this past Friday at age eighty six. It's a lot of. It's a lot of people. Yeah. Did you, did some little rapper died today too. I saw that before. I think twenty years old. Really? Yeah. Six pack or somebody. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. How did? What did he die of? Uh-huh. I don't know either. Uh-huh. Um. Uh-huh. 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 So political season is revving up in um uh, in, in the city. Cleveland, uh, you got all these people coming out of the woodworks running for mayor. Yeah, just want y'all to know. This but, ain't, this ain't no now, 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 it's a huge undertaking. Now, if you saw our like before we get into political, um, the Ohio Senator Ron Portman, Rod Portman, Rod Portman. I told you this boy a butcher a name. Listen, weak ass Republican. <laughs> That's what I'm calling him right now. Yeah, he is not, not running in 20, 2022. He's not seeking re-election. This mm-hmm. will be his last term. What do you th- well, because, well, number one, he's a wuss. And number two, that because his boy is not in office anymore, that I'm, 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 I'm figuring that, you know, he's not, he, he, he he's tired. Mm. Or he just got enough money for his corrupt dealings and decided to leave. Or, I don't he's, know. Yeah, or he's moving his political career in a different, different direction. Something's up. I don't know what he's aiming for. But he's, he's aiming something's for something Something's always up. He might be, you know, vying for Sherrod Brown. He'll he never get Sherrod Brown well, out of there. Sherrod Brown running for governor. That's what they're talking about. Can you hear that? Sherrod Brown running for governor of Ohio? Mm-hmm. Hmm. That leaves a seat open. Yeah. Why would anybody want to hire? Why Why would anybody want Rob Portman? Because Ohio is a red state. Ohio is a red state. And when do you turn it back blue again? I don't know. Ohio is a red state. We need to do something with this state, though. We need to do something very yeah, much. Like, first of all, we need to like the city, like city council, county council. We need to clean that up. You need to clean it up. Just clean it up. You need to just throw it all away. Start over. From county council all the way down to state. All the way back up Um, to the mayor. Before we start, uh, another person died also. The remember the guy from Barney Miller? Oh yeah, you talking about um, Gregory? Yeah, Julio Gregory Joseph Sierra. He played Julio on Barney Miller. He passed away. No, he played Julio on Sanford and Son. Yeah, Julio on Sanford and Son. Yeah. Yeah, so he, he couldn't stand him. Yeah, so he passed away. Um, he was ninety something too, right? Yeah, ninety four. A lot. Oh gosh, we forgot. Almost forgot. Who? Larry King. Oh, Larry King. Yeah, he died. Yeah, ninety seven, eighty seven. Right after Hank Aaron. 
Right. Was it the day after or the day before? Day after. Yeah. Larry's been hanging on a long time, too. Larry King, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He, he has been. He has been. He has been. And we just came up on the anniversary of... The death of Kobe Bryant. Uh-huh. T-Rex just called me. Did he call you? Yeah. Shout out to the human T-Rex. We are actually, we got, um, who's the man back there? Shiny Sean. Shiny Sean in the building. <laughs> DJ Shiny Sean. Shiny Sean on the ones on and twos. On the board? On the yeah. board. DJ Shiny Sean. DJ right. Shiny Sean. So he's on the board with us. So, um, we got a, uh, you know what? Yeah, what are you, what are you inundated with over there? Because uh, you just over there. I'm, I'm. You're not I, paying I'm paying attention here. We came on an intro music. We came on air. Shani Shani is like, uh, you're live. <laughs> you're like, mm-hmm. What are you doing? <laughs> Hold on, just a second. That was I was just letting like letting him know that we are on air. You want me to play the song? Um, we start over again. Uh, no, no. You know what? He ain't, he, you know he, what? He just play the. Him. He all killed her. Just play the intro music if you see, wish. Because that gets him in the mood. Because you know he got to do all this. All this, all this, all this. <laughs> leave me alone. Yeah, leave me alone. <laughs> so leave me alone. Shani, Shani don't know. See, I know him. He he ain't right, man. Play the intro. Let's take it from the top. Take it from the top, ladies. All right. Watch him, Shani. Watch him. He gets into it. I'm good. good now. Yes, I am. All right. All right. We're back. Welcome to the headline. I revamp Larry H. Gardner in the building. The H stands for holy shit, we got to restart. <laughs> because it's my See fault. What I'm right. So we got to get that you ASAP. Right? Uh, yeah, ASAP right. first. I, I got, I All right. Fair. So, like I said, Julio, who, like, like this, we got Larry King. He's been around for a while. Larry King. Uh-huh. He's been around for a minute. He died mm-hmm. right after. Like, everybody dropping off. Well, it's a cycle of life. But, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, Hank Aaron took the you know, vaccine two weeks earlier. And now, all of a sudden, he's gone. You know they're trying to tie that into that. Right? I know. And that's where my petty post came in on Monday. First of all, I'm, oh, going, yeah, I'm, going, to, I'm going to say this. Listen, I don't care what happened to Hank Aaron. I don't talk about the dead. And some idiot wanted to, like, put something stupid. And I responded, you know, he's dead. You know, and he said, I don't give a fuck about that old nigga. And it, was, he, uh, was he of the Caucasian persuasion? He, no, he was. He was one of us? Close to it. He's, he's like, he's, Arab, he's black and Arab, Arab yeah. He's yeah, that's the problem. See, that's the thing about it is like, what have you done? Because Hank Aaron experienced, he experienced death threats while he was, because one of his big things was breaking Babe Ruth's home run record. Yeah. And if you know about baseball, you know that Babe Ruth, he was the white, white the great white hope. And the thing about it is, is when you were like the great, you don't do that. And he got so many death threats. He told his team, he had to drive, ride on the bus by himself or to take it. Like he couldn't ride with the team. He told people to stay away from him because he didn't want nobody to get shot. The day, the night he was in Atlanta, because he played for the Braves and the, Bre- the Bre- Brewers. Mm-hmm. The night that he broke it in, uh, in Atlanta, when he was a member of the Atlanta Braves, uh, he had a security guard Mm -hmm. or somebody in the stands to make sure that he didn't get shot. And there was two white teenagers running when he broke the record. There was two, when he was coming around third, head and tone, there was two white teenagers running beside him, patting him on the back. 
which I thought it was special. You know, mm-hmm. the guy, one, the person that was securing Hank was about to pull out his gun and about to, like, if, if he was in trouble, they was going to, there's going to be some capping in the baseball field. We ain't want that. So the backstory on that, but I'm glad that he broke it. But like Jackie Robinson, like Larry Doby of the Cleveland Indians, when you are an African-American player breaking into the baseball uh, baseball at those times, you experienced to the racism to the point where every day there was a death threat. Every. Yeah, except, except for the year. So just like I don't like the thing about it is like I don't speak on it there. Just like, you know, Michael Jackson, when Oprah did that, never, you know, mm-hmm. survive in Neverland, that special in Lifetime. And he's been dead for eons. I don't like that. Along with like this is the year to the day. Mm-hmm. The, yeah, that Kobe Bryant, his daughter, Gianna, and other. um yeah, that they died in a helicopter crash, and people still want to bring up his past indiscretions in Colorado. The man's dead. Let it rest. You trying to get click, clickbait off that or whatever press clippings off that? The man's dead. His not only he, I don't know, somebody else did mm-hmm. something stupid. Mm-hmm. He's just getting trying to get likes or whatever, just like some other stuff that people are trying to get likes on and. Mm-hmm. Then, all right. The first of all, I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at this I'm looking this up. Let me explain. The thing in Cali the the thing in California. Uh so there was a senator who was homosexual and they were talking about he was making a pedophile law. He was making a pedophile law. I saw this on social media, Facebook. Again, somebody accusing somebody of doing something who has, and this person we know has absolutely had nothing, did nothing for Ohio, but you're going into California. Um, and pr- pretty much. What they say? Well, they, here's what they said. And this I'm going to pull, I really don't want to pull, pull it up and give them any more credit than they already think that they and they had. Don't right. Don't answer that. So the thing about it is, is that what they were trying to talk about was this law for, uh, they said it, was, it wasn't it was for pedophilia. First of all, what it is is that you're going to, like, statutory rape in California. Mm-hmm. So what happens is, is that if you get on statutory rape in California, then you're going to be on there for you're you're on there for life. So the thing about it is, is that um, this is um, the senator Scott Weiner. Yeah, Scott Senator Scott Weiner. Larry last name. W i e n e r. Okay, Weiner. Weiner, and he introduced a bill to decriminalize. Um, they said men having sex with boys, but what it is is that when you're of a Men having sex with boys. So let me explain. People didn't read the law. Let me explain. The law states that if a man has sex with an underage girl, then he's on the sexual predator list because mm-hmm. that's statutory. Mm-hmm. If same man has same sex with girl of, with girl of same age, like they're both 18, then it's considered consensual, consensual unless she said no or whatever. What he tried, this is the way the bill is set up. This is not even in law yet, whatever. When men have sex with men of the same age, even they're 18, they would put them on the sexual predator list for life, even if they were the same age. Hey, I'm confused. Okay. Let's say man has sex with man, eight, both, they both 18. Okay. The person who initiated the sex would be on the sexual predator list. Even though they're the same. Right. So what the bill would state was, this is the actual bill, and I'm more studying into this. The bill would state that this particular, per, like, they wouldn't be put on the predator list 
sexual predator list because they're of same age, even though they had se- se- sensual because they had sex with the same sex. Period. So that's what that's the thing. So this what we doing now? But we're this but what we doing? right. But we're all the way in California, right? But okay, so okay, never mind. Okay, so we all the way in California. Never mind. We got to mind our own little storefront right here in Ohio. Exactly. We we're, we're well, like we have. We don't even have we, the capacity right, of a California. What, what what are we worried about with California now? Right, and. This is why I'm calling this show. This this show is called the real versus the petty, because oh, is that what you mean by that? I, yes, the reason why I said that is because of the simple fact of the matter is is that people are keep saying the inauguration was fake. Who said that? Uh, social media. What? The stay woke folks, the wannabe stay woke folks who repeat stuff by white supremacists. Like it was fake. Fake. I mean, fake how? I mean, it helped me understand how it was fake when um, our forever first lady broke the internet. Um, so, I mean, it's Right. It, 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 like, the thing about it is, it's like they thought because it was staged, it was fake, everything was fake. What, what was fake about it? The whole thing, the whole inauguration was fake. It was staged, it was recorded, and then it was broadcast, li- it was broadcast, recorded. Everything, huh? from the singing don't, to don't don't, don't get us no more energy. Don't do it. Don't don't give any more energy. Because it's, I keep telling you that these people are weird. Don't give it. Get your cousins, Jay. You know. Get your cousins. You know. Get your cousins. You know. Get them. You, 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 you. Oh, and oh, and by the way, mm-hmm. speaking of people that want Joe Biden to do something. Mm-hmm. President Joe Biden, it's good to have an adult in the White House. I swear for God it is. It is so refreshing to have an adult in the White House. President Joe Biden signed an executive order for racial equalities, for racial equalities plus ending funding for private prisons. Like, yeah. even, you know, it's small. The mm-hmm. private prisons from are a federal from a federal standpoint. Right. Let's, Let's make sure you put that in there. From a federal standpoint. From a federal, from a federal standpoint. standpoint but ending, as far as, you know, state states, and local. Those are still yeah. a problem. Mm-hmm. So you have to have the Governor. governors of those states do that. Mm-hmm. But President Biden, like I said, it's so good to have an adult. Adults, not children, running around here on Twitter in the house. Mm-hmm. That we have people running it to the point where executive orders are being made for the federal to end those funds going to those private prisons and equality. Now, I don't know if it include police departments in there. But he's may trying to make a change. And some of the African-American people said, well, what is in it for us? What is Biden doing for us? What did he, what, did he look at Ice Cube's um, um, contract, with, uh, the, the contract with a black America? Did he do that? Yeah, that, that thing. But what Biden is doing is signing, is signing. Now, if you know about any politics or any political political laws that the Executive orders only last as long as the pre- that pr- particular president is in office. He also ended the funding towards the wall, and he stopped the pipeline. I which, said in the pipeline. Yeah, the right. pipeline. Yeah. yeah. And the thing about it is, if for people upset about the pipeline, the pipeline was going. It was going. The the, pi- the pipeline. Oh, okay. The pipeline. That pipeline was going through a federal. National reservation. That means it has dead Indians on that federal Native Americans buried there in that pipeline. Yeah. Yes. We seem to have forgotten. We forget that. Here's the thing. Like I said, don't mess with dead people. That's why. Listen. When you mess with the spirit of Native Americans, that's probably why we so had many so had so many problems. Now, like I said, karma is a bitch. And it'll come back to haunt you 
And if you you don't want the souls of Native Americans haunting you, and that's what's been happening. I feel like that's what's been happening to this country. That's why we have so much bad karma bestowed upon us. Now, the pandemic is still going on, but I feel like this, and I'm a big figure, a big big believer in spiritual warfare. When Biden said he was talking about the soul of this country, I think that's what he meant. Because right now we were losing our soul to the devil Trump and the Trumplinkins because they had no scruples or morals of how to get things done the way they wanted to get them done. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like this. I'm scared if you do something to, if you mess with the final resting place of people that have been, I don't know, robbed of their land. Um, I don't agree with you because you, you, you never mess with people. Right. Um, you know, it, it's just so many things that have gone on, so many things that have happened. Just to go back and rehash it would be just it would right. take too much out of you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a new day. You know, we have you know new leadership. You know, in the White House, and I'll call it that now. Um, versus the, the the occupant at sixteen hundred Pennsylvania Avenue when he was there. So you know, we don't want to rehash or you know revisit any of the things. Let's let those sleeping dogs let. Mm-hmm. Um, and and press forward and you know hold President Biden to what we expect of him. And we need to start inspecting to what we expect of all of our political elected officials. We need to hold their feet to the carpet. Right. And I know everyone's running around talking about, you know, what is he going to do for the black people? You know, that's going to be up to what your local government goes for. Thank you. Right. And goes for on your behalf. So you need to start holding your local and your state elected officials responsible to what you're expecting of them so that they can go to the federal level and bring back the resources that we need to get our communities back to where they need to be. Mm-hmm. So you start there first. Let's start there first. Right. So we we have well, the thing about it is I think that we have to start there first. We should. And the these the the real issues of this. Biden is doing whatever he can to undo what the idiot did before. And it's going to take him a minute. He just can't go in there with a magical pen and just wipe away everything. He cannot do that. It's not, it's not possible. It's not doable. You've got to start somewhere undoing certain things in order to start making some headway. You just can't just go in there with a magical pen and just wipe everything out. You, you just can't do that. And I think people were expecting that. And yet again, once again... Just like when President Obama was elected, right. we thought because he was a black president that we had arrived and that everything was going to go our way. And black people had now been pushed to the front of the line when in reality we were just leaving the train station. Right. And we still did not help President Obama do what it is that we expected of him because we didn't get up off our narrow asses and go to the, to the polls during the election times that we needed to go to get him the people he needed in order to pass the laws that he wanted. What we did do with President Biden, with President Biden though, is he has what he needs to make some shit crack. Right. But I've said this before and I'll say it again. President Biden ain't running this country. And what I mean by that? President Obama gonna help him all the that's who running the country. From the back seat. Well, I mean, the thing about it is like you on like you can't wipe out uh over like three hundred or four hundred years of injustice in eight years. If you are like that's that's a minus. Biden is also pushing for the minimum wage to go up. To fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Um he's also pushing for now, let me let me stop you right here. Right. Mm-hmm. No problem with paying people what they're worth because I think fifteen dollars is just you know the tip of the iceberg. Of the right, system. right. But these people that they're putting in these customer service positions in these McDonald's mm-hmm. and all these other places. Oh God! If y'all don't get some damn medicine <laughs> and understand that customer service is actually an art, and learn how to be nice, and learn how to talk, and learn how to fornicate 
your words and put a structured sentence together. It ain't about, I don't know what you're talking about. Popping your head, popping your neck, chewing gum. That is not customer service. Customer service is a lost art that we need to redevelop for this younger generation. Right. Because that's why you see so many people get mad because these, these kids, and I'll call them kids because I'm 52 years old, these kids don't understand what it means to deliver excellent customer well, service. Well, yeah, I mean, you got to, and unfortunately, that is that that is learned from the household, just like every, no, everything. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. Some of it is. Mm-mm. We need programs to teach you the skill set to deliver customer service. We used to have that back in the day, just like we taught him home economics, uh-huh. just like we cha- um, taught wood, um, wood shop. All those things were taught to us. We knew how to sew. Young ladies knew proper etiquette. We knew how to set a dinner table. We knew how to cross our legs. All this stuff we got away from. We need to bring it back. Then maybe we won't have all this twerking and shit going on and all this other stuff going on. Right. Well, speaking of crazy stuff. Now, remember Senator Steve Huffman Huffman from Troy? What do you do? All right. Let me explain. Okay. Now, the thing about it is, is that, you know, he was... He said some racist stuff. Oh, he, is he the one talking about um, black people being cleanliness or something like that? Yeah, he said colored people. He ain't say black. He said the word colored, which I can't stand. Like we can wash our color off with a with 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 with, with bleach or whatever. I don't understand that. But colored. Now he's the head of the public safety. Or, uh, yeah, he was the he was yeah he was a he was a he was an a lawmaker. He was um. Mm. He was chosen to lead this Ohio's. State the state of Ohio's health panel. Is that what it is? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. Mm-hmm. While we worried about mm-hmm. California somewhere, mm-hmm. there's some problems here with Portman and this whatever. Didn't they say somebody his family appointed him to that board? Isn't he related to somebody? I think so. I think Steve Huffman was related. And y'all still, we still got, we still have to, ar- we need to arrest Larry Householder, um, the head of the Republican Party. Con- um, um, that person. For the CPP stuff? Yeah, for the mm-hmm. first energy bribes and all that other stuff like that. But we worried yeah, about, Ca- yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, we worried about California. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See, here's the problem it's, with it's that. some people that we know that were a part of that as well that still sit at that state house. They name ain't came up yet, but it's going to come up. Right. And you know them. Right, so watch. And I know and they ain't name ain't come up, so mm-hmm. when they do come up, mm-hmm. You know I'm going to blast their ass. I don't care if you like me or not. If, But Larry, uh-uh, nope. I am, my name, like, my name is Wesley. Somebody called a bully last week. Huh? Somebody called us a bully last week. Yes, yeah, somebody called us a bully. Listen, I'm going to say I this. I did my job. <laughs> Pretty damn well. Mm-hmm. Um, Let me explain something. Mm-hmm. We represent, we are, we are nonpartisan. We don't care if you're Democrat or Republican. If you're running for a particular, you're running for an office, we welcome you to come on the headline Eye on Nerve DJs. Be prepared. Just be prepared to answer the questions that you're going to have. Be, be to be you, right. Be prepared to answer the questions that you're going to face from the public. Because trust me, the public will ask the tough questions, and we represent the. Public. the Thank you, the public. But they like it or not? And if you're not prepared to answer these questions, if you don't have your signatures, and Ted, I don't care if you run for mayor, city council, whatever, precinct captain, you know, any political office that can affect change in the city of in the city of Cleveland or the state of Ohio, or if you're a judicial candidate, you must be prepared to ask these tough questions because. People are tired, and they're not going to take any. There's a, it's a new day. It's a new year. It's a new day, and nobody's not going to take the same old bullshit that they was fed four years ago. I don't think nobody's going to take the same old BS that was fed four months ago. So the bottom line is, is that if you're not prepared, come get prepared. Well, not not come get prepared. To, come get prepared before you come on here, because if you're not prepared when you come on here. The public gonna eat you alive. I'm just letting you know. And, and people need to understand 
understand, you don't do the job when you get the job. You must be already doing the job before you get the job. That's what people don't understand. You can't expect to get in a mayoral seat and figure it out then. No, you're just taking the city further and further down a rabbit hole that we probably will never, ever get ourselves out for quite some time. So when you when you look at these seats and you and you look at these positions, don't just look at them because oh look at me I'm running for mayor I want to be mayor. Look nah, at everything bro. that goes along with being a mayor of a metropolitan city that is predominantly African American. Don't get mad. And the thing about it is, and don't get mad. Don't get mad. Don't shoot the messenger. Because it was like th- like because WKY so the three uh, WKYC um, all. It, NBC, CBS, ABC, all the local and national stations are going to ask you the same questions. And if you don't have a team that's prepared to answer those questions, then you're not going to make it. Just letting you know, there's a lot of people running their races and, and, and have some money, damn it. I'm just saying, like, you got to have some money for ads or something like that. And, like, I should be charging some of y'all, you know, for political advice because you like, that's the basic things. Have your platform ready, have your war chest ready, and have your team ready. Because if those, because if all those are not ready, you're not ready. You might have to go back to the drawing board. Have, your, have everything ready. And everybody has a vision. Okay. We all got visions. But what are you going to do to bring your vision to fruition? That's what I want to know. What Wait. are you going to do? What steps are you going to take? How do you plan on arriving there? Right. Don't, don't just tell me you're going to do this. Uh, 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 no. 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 And, and here's my thing. Here's my petty. Nerve-wracking. Here's my petty thing. Don't try to... I'm going to be I'm, I'm going to be petty a little, just a little bit. I, see, I can tell it already. I'll be petty just a little bit. Don't try to con me, trying to put me on somewhere where you think that you can try to wiggle your way into a, oh, I can get you and, and try to, you know, and try to think that you can outsmart me. I've seen swindlers come and go. I Hell, I swindled. The hell wrong with you? You can't play a player. You can't bullshit a bullshitter. And you damn sure can't game a game. Thank you very much. Preach. Preach. Preach, queen. So, just letting you know. So we got like and the thing about it is like it's the real issues versus the petty issues. The petty issues are what? What is the petty issues? We, we want to talk about the real issues. The, the city would, is in real trouble. It is in real trouble. You know we're in real trouble. We, I mean we're we're almost to a point of we're just destitute, and I don't think people are really realizing that the city is. I mean we are going. I mean it's just crazy. And you're coming out here, you know, you don't have a platform for the city that you're trying to be mayor of. Then miss me with that. I, I, you don't need my vote. And, and you know, like Larry said, you know, we, we, we don't, we're by, you know, we're unbiased. We don't go one way or another. But I have my pick. And I'm just waiting for that person to come out and say that they are actually throwing their hat in this ring. And, you know, when they say that, then, you know, I, I'll, it's all, it's, it's, it's on. Because they haven't said anything yet. Right, right. So there's more people coming out, the early people. I'm just waiting for this one particular person. Right. Let me just explain one thing. I'm going to say this. I don't care if you, if I don't care what color you are. Just be prepared, damn it. I just like, really, just, just be prepared. I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm just like, I want to know what your platform is. I'm also a registered voter in the city of Cleveland. So you really... Got to persuade me to vote for you. Well, really, we do have a dog uh, in this race because uh, yeah. at the end of the day, it's about what you're going to do to make sure that we have a good quality of life if we plan on staying in the city of Cleveland and growing old in the city of Cleveland. What do you plan to do for me so that I can have a quality of life, I can age right. in place comfortably? You know, what services are you going to provide to me? But not only that, we have seniors that are above us. They're not aging in place properly. Right. You know, so there, it, it's a lot more than people think, and it's a it's a lot more that goes on behind those closed doors in city hall. Uh, There's a lot that goes on in that red room, and until you've actually sat in the mayor's red room and been in a meeting right, in that red room, right. you really don't understand exactly what goes on. And I've been yeah. in several of them. 
You know, you got to come down to the city council or county council meetings. If you got to, like, you really, like, if you haven't been a part of that or seen what's going on, you really, and if you said you've been in that red room with them meetings, yeah, they, really people don't really understand nothing. You know, so yeah. you got to really, you got to prepare yourself. You got to know, and, and know what the damn budget is for the city of Cleveland. Damn. What's that? Shoot. I think it's like 700 and... Twenty-one million or whatever. What's that? What's that? What do you mean? What's that? Got a budget? What's like how much city? Could, like how much the city pulls in per year? Like how much money? For real? Yeah. You mean I gotta balance that? Yeah. Yes. But line yes, line, line items? items, line by line items. And by departmental budget? Yes. Plus salary. Yes. Plus overhead. Yes. For city services. Yes. Are you serious? That's in every major metropolitan city. Plus that you get. Yes. Plus, you got to. But plus, you got to meet with. I don't know. There's three major sports teams in Cleveland: the Browns, Indians, and Cavaliers. You have you have residual income, you know, revenue from that. Yes. Where does that go in the budget? Where are those line items at? What about casino revenue, casino dollars? Where is that in the budget? Is it a budget all by itself? Yes. People don't understand that, and I'm being I'm being sarcastic because. This is what people need to understand. If you can't add two plus two, please don't try to get your ass and balance the budget. I've been there and done it. You, you lose sleep at night. You really do. Trying to balance a budget. I only had to balance a two, a $2 million budget. What do you balance? Seven hundred and something million? Yeah, same what I mean. Uh-huh, yeah. So, really, it, it ain't just all what you think. It's not a cakewalk. It's not a, a walk in the park. It's more in detail. It's more in depth. When you take on the, a me, you are responsible for a whole city. You are you got people's lives in your hand. Literally, think about that. You literally have people's lives in your hand. Right. And city council, you have people's lives in your hands. Because in your wards, you have people's lives in your hands. Right. And y'all have done? Absolutely, positively nothing. Thank you. I, I, I'm sorry for finishing your sentence, but I, I was, I was going to be, I was being nice about it, but you were about to say some. That goes for city council and county council. You, you, you was, that I, goes for both of them. Right. You was, I know you was about to say some ill stuff. So I was and, just And going, I don't even know why we have two. Because it, it's, a, to me, it's a, a duplication. Mm. What do we have county council for? And then I see where Armand Budish is under investigation again. <laughs> when, have, when, when are we not going to be under investigation for the FBI? He's Don't under they investigation got, for uh, steering um, oh my something God. about the new jail going into East Cleveland. Oh, my. Yeah, that. And listen, the FBI has got enough problems arresting all these domestic terrorists and insurrectionists from the Capitol Hill rise on January 6th. You don't need enough stuff for them to do. Like, I got to find out all these crates. And, and people been turning, like, we got to, you know what, and that's the pet, like, the thing about it is, I, don't let me, don't be a neighbor next to me and you was part of that thing. I'm petty. I'm going to turn you in for the money. Uh, can we get um, some kind of music? I want to take a little short break. We want to come back. When we come back, we're going to talk about, hey, what what do you think goes on grits, sugar or salt, Jay? Uh. Salt and butter. No In sugar. My country boys, salt and butter. You are, you are from. Yeah, I forgot you from Mississippi. Don't put no sugar on my grits. <laughs> it's salt and butter <laughs> and little cheese. Salt and butter and cheese. And little cheese. I always put. I like. I mix mine with eggs. I'm well, and yeah, eggs. Well, yeah, you have eggs and bacon and, and, and sausage. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. But don't you put no sugar on my grits? No sugar. Mm-mm. No sugar. Mm-mm. Not no none at all. Mm-mm. No sugar. No Mm-mm. none of that. Nothing. Mm-mm. Nothing at all. Mm-mm. So, we're going to take a two minute when we come back. Thank you, DJ Shiny Sean, for the first part of the headline. When we come back, we're going to talk about who more petty, men or women? Don't even, don't answer that. I know what your, what your voice is fixing to say. We'll be right back with the headline. I- and clear. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Javante. Thank you, Marcus, Sean, Eric. 
I gotta get. Hey, 